we've been talking about angina pectoris lately and we said that angina pectoris is uh pain of the heart and it's great versus and this is due to what obstruction of blood flow to the heart do you understand so we said that when this blood flow is obstructed then um oxygen demand by the muscles of the heart is not being met with oxygen supply do you understand so we'll be looking at various factors that are affecting this cardiac oxygen demand and supply okay what are some conditions that can make the oxygen demand by cardiac muscles go up do you understand so we'll be looking at it and we'll be looking at the supply all right so factors affecting cardiac oxygen demand and supply all right so basically there's supply of oxygen and there's demand oxygen okay so we're not really i will use this image for like um we we'll use this image for like a uh, revision or summary okay so what are the factors affecting cardiac oxygen demand and supply uh first of all we have what preload all right and preload refers to the what diastolic filling pressure or left ventricular end diastolic what pressure okay the pressure at rest the pressure at what when the ventricle is relaxed okay so when the ventricle is relaxed the feeling from the atrium to the ventricles. Do you understand? Blood passing through all those valves down to the ventricles is what we call preload. Okay? Now, it is the amount of what ventricular stretch at the end of, of diastole or the volume of blood in the ventricles just before contraction. Okay? So when the ventricles is relaxed, blood flows in. So the volume of blood in the ventricles before it contracts to shoot blood out through the iota and the rest, okay, is what we call preload, okay? So this preload to affect uh, oxygen demand, cardiac oxygen demand. Then let's look at afterload. Well, maybe we won't look at this afterload, you guys to now um, harness all the, the knowledge, okay? So afterload is also known as what systemic vascular resistance, okay? So it's the amount of resistance the heart must overcome to open the aortic valve and push blood out into the systemic circulation. You know that when the ventricles fill up, this blood needs to what? Be pushed out into the systemic circulation, mostly the left ventricle, okay? Pushed into the systemic circulation. And pushing blood into the systemic circulation, there's already blood into, in the systemic circulation. So pushing new blood into the systemic circulation will have to undergo a lot of resistance do you understand so the heart overcoming this resistance is what we call what after load you understand the contractility uh this is uh the preload all right filling of the ventricles after load uh sending the blood into the systemic circulation the contractility a contractility we said that uh, this is the relative capacity of cardiac muscles to pump blood at a given preload or afterload okay and is determined by the interaction between calcium and the cardiac what myofilament right that's why we said that if there's hypertension in the heart uh that's there's hyper contraction of the heart muscles for you to actually uh, another treatment for hypertension you can use uh, calcium channel blockers right so now this calcium is needed for contraction of the heart muscles, right? So contractility is just looking at the rhythm at which the heart is contracting, the rate at which the heart is contracting, okay? So this is basically like the work that the heart is doing. So if the heart is contracting more, oxygen demand will be more. Do you understand? That's just how it is. The heart rate, uh, we said that the heart pumps more blood out and pumps better at a reduced heart rate okay so basically heart rate and contractility is just looking at the amount of work that the heart is doing so if the work the heart is doing much more work oxygen demand will be much more okay so all this can lead to this following factors uh decreased oxygen supply uh this increases what myocardial fiber tension all right that's if you have decreased oxygen supply this will increase myocardial fiber tension um, heart rate contractility preload and afterload will reduce what oxygen supply to the myocardium okay 
So these are all of this. Then increased oxygen supply. I, uh, um, oxygen supply is increased by what coronary blood flow and regionally what myocardial blood flow. Okay. The myocardial ischemia. This occurs when the myocardial oxygen demand is greater than what the oxygen supply. Okay. So these are basically like the main factors, and we said that these factors can actually lead to this. Okay. And there's also equilibrium and balance. We said that when the oxygen demand equals the supply of the myocardium, okay, that's oxygen demand into the what ox equals to oxygen delivery or supply. So I'll just say that this slide is mostly like just trying to define these terminologies that we are actually supposed to know under what angina pectoris, okay. So guys, that's it about uh, the note on um, factors affecting oxygen demand and oxygen supply in the heart okay so that's it and bye